All right, so now we have our sketch cropped and sized with the right number of pixels. You can always double check that through image, image size. So I'm doing it very large, 11 by 16 by 350. You don't need really any larger than that. Now I'm going to increase the canvas size because this is now like having a blueprint sketch for my collage and I want working space around it so I can cut out my different elements and then put them around my desk and then layer them on on top of my blueprint. So what we do is we go to image and we go to canvas size. Image size changes the pixels within our pixel space. Canvas size extends or crops the pixels of our canvas space. So we're going to build pixels around our pixel space. So right now it's whatever you decided, you know, at least eight by 10. Mine is 16 by 11 inches in canvas size. I'm going to make that 40 inches wide by 30 inches tall. And why 30 by 40? And we'll use it for the next project too. This is what's called a working space, not the image space or pixel space. So 30 by, by 40 inches is the largest size professional printing can accommodate. So if something is printed beyond 30 by 40 inches, like a billboard, it's printed at a lower resolution. And that's because billboards are now printed on canvas and they're printed on these huge inkjet printers that do more like a 150 dots per inch resolution. And they they run with ink cartridges on um, bicycle chains. They're really interesting to see, but that's kind of a new invention since the, the early 2000s. Billboards before were made of printed sheets at full resolution that had to be kind of wallpapered and glued together that at maximum were 30 inches by 40 inches. That's like full poster size the largest size that a regular printing press can accommodate. And it's just kind of a good thing to know. So I'm going to grow it from the center. So don't change those defaults. And then I'll hit command zero just to fit it all on screen. And you see, I have now my sketch and then a whole lot of empty space around it to make that a little bit more visually pleasing. I have to work around all my zoom kind of chat and participant screens that you're not seeing. Um, I'm going to create a new layer on top. And then I'm going to say edit fill with middle gray. So this is my desk top. This is like my drafting table. And then I'm going to move that underneath my sketch. So this gives me a place to put all the things I'm going to cut out before I move them into my final image. This is, increases your memory quite a bit, but it's just for our base layer. When, and when you pulled up the fill, um, yes, under edit, the middle gray. Yes. Under edit fill. When we say edit fill, what we are always going to use is either white, black, or middle gray. Okay. And I do it this way rather than using like the paint bucket or a color selector because this will give me exactly middle gray. It will give me exactly solid black. It will give me exactly solid white. All right. Now I am ready to start bringing images in. So let me save command S and let me show you how to do that same thing in photo P. So here's my image in photo P. I'm going to check its image dimensions, going to image image size. It's larger than eight by 10, larger than, or at 300. I have it eight by 11.87 by 350. That's great. Now I'm going to go to, and I have my guides, you know, showing me its edges. Now I'm going to go to image canvas size. And I have to change it from pixels to inches, but I want it to be 30 by 40 inches. Now, because this one's vertical, I'm going to make it 30 inches wide by 40 inches tall. Let it grow from the middle, leave all the defaults. Hit Command R. Now what you'll notice is in Photo P, even though we cropped the image, it didn't lose the information. And that's why these guides are important. 
But on top of that, I'm going to make a new layer. And I'm going to say edit fill, just like in Photoshop. And I'm going to change the fill from foreground to gray. And that will be a middle gray at all the defaults, normal 100%. It fills it up. Then I put that underneath my background layer, right? And now I'm going to use my rectangular marquee. And I'm going to use the guides to select the cropping of my sketch on my background layer. And then I'm going to hit Command J or Control J if you're on a PC and then turn off that background. And in some ways, this is helpful, too, because I have all my notes then. And I can just dim that, that uncropped sketch to about 15% opacity. Then I'm going to lock my sketch, just like we locked our, our template for our emoji in exercise two. I'll go ahead and lock these, all three of these. And now I'm ready to bring things in. Let's go back to Photoshop. I'm going to bring things in, but I'm going to lock my sketch first. Lock the background. Okay. I go to my desktop. I go to my folder. I find my image resources. And thinking of my sketch, I want to build from the background on forward. So the first thing I'm going to bring in is my sky and I just drag and drop it onto the gray space and it will come in as a smart object don't mess with that smart object yet just hit return just place it and if you're lucky your image as it comes in will be pretty big already because it, it will be matching the resolution of your pixel space And then I'll do the same thing here. I'm going to bring in the same sky. And it comes in as a smart object. Again, big enough. And I just hit return to place it. You see that little icon in the, the layer window. That means it's a smart object. It's not rasterized yet. So first we bring them in as smart objects. Next, what's, what's next? You know, from the furthest thing from the viewer to the closest thing to the viewer. I'd say that jelly bean moon is next. Bring that in. Nice and big. Mine's a PNG element. It's already cut out. But it comes in as a smart object. Same thing with photo P. Bring it in. Now, what's interesting is in PhotoP, it looks a little bit smaller, right? And that's because PhotoP goes by strict pixels, whereas to express smart objects, whereas Photoshop shows you it based on the, the physical dimensions of the image. So you'll notice that this looks kind of blurry compared to this. but it's not, the pixels are the same. They come from the exact same file. And so we're going to make them match. So even though this is way bigger than it looks like it needs to be, it's actually closer to the resolution it should be. And again, if resolution confuses you, you just got to trust me on it. <laughs> we're, we're working on a, a good resolution space and we'll be getting lots of practice at it. Okay, next, what comes in? Um, the mountains, mountain elements, right? I'm doing my big five first. So what's my best mountain element? Maybe this one. This is the most that looks like mountains. And I see that size. Yeah, that's a pretty good size. In fact, it's a little too big. So I can shrink it down a little bit just to fit it off on the corner. And don't worry, that information is still there even if it goes off my, my working space. And then I can bring in some of those other mountains too. You can start to see why we need all of this space. So 
So I might have blue mountains, yellow mountains. Shrink it down a little bit. And you can see how this resolution, especially these image files that are over 2,000 pixels, are plenty for the sizes we need. And then some of this rock candy at the base. Remember, you have to hit return to place it. And I think I'll use these more in the foreground. Okay, next, cotton candy fields. But I can do the, the mountains into here. So, same thing, drop. Notice the size difference. That's because this is based on the actual pixels rather than the, the dimensions, the physical dimensions. But they're the same file. They'll have the same potential. Now I'm doing one that's vertical and one that's horizontal. You, of course, only have to do one. You decide. You can hit Command S, that's going to save it. Hit Command S in Photoshop, that's going to save it as I go. Okay, now what's on top of that? The cotton candy. And this is the one I wanted to use. And right away, this one, in order to use it, I want the light to be at the top, so I need to rotate it. I want to grow it. I might even hold down shift to distort it a little bit. And I want it big enough. It's kind of like that. So the problem is now this one, which is in the middle ground, is covering up some of the others. And so at this point, I can do the next step which is exactly like what you would do if you were collaging from magazine pages. So I've been doing the equivalent of, I set up my workspace, I put down my drawing, I'm now tearing out pages from the magazine. This one just came already as like a sticker, already cut out. But I haven't cut out the pages yet. So the next step is to do a rough cut. And to do the rough cut, I'm gonna turn off my guides. And you can do that by going up to view, and where it says show and then unchecking guides, but the shortcut for guides is command semicolon for a PC control semicolon. So I'm going to turn them off. And that's because when I'm cutting with my lasso tool, I'm just going to roughly cut around, leaving space. If I had my guides on, I'll do it again with the guides turned on my cutting tool is going to snap to those guides in a way I can't control. And you see, so it cuts off some of my cotton candy. So instead, if I turn the guides off, then it won't snap to them. And I could also set it to not snap to them, but in general, guides are useful to have snaps. All right, so now that I've done a rough cut around it, how do I cut it out? I can't hit delete, right? Because it's a smart object and I don't want to rasterize it. So what do I do? I just hit Command J. And that will automatically rasterize and cut out the thing sized the way I want it. And when I've done that, then I can actually delete the smart object. I don't need to waste memory on that anymore. If I ever want it again, I just bring it in from my resources. Because remember, rasterizing means that you're saving the pixels within the program. So now these pixels are saved within Photoshop instead of being referenced from another file. I can trim it a little bit closer, but do not try to do a, a really tight cleaning up of it yet, right? We want to have that kind of overlap. So it's rough cutting. And then what goes on top of that? Licorice. Bring my licorice trees in. I can size those a little bit. 